Time for another confession. Uh, Sister Susie is in the studio, uh, but still choosing a drink of the day for us. Well, I think it has to be a gin and tonic, doesn't it? Yes, it does. If in doubt. <laughs> Matt, what are you going to go I'm for? I'm going to be having a big gin and tonic. Big gin and tonic. It's Tuesday. Yeah. Matt always has a gin uh, and tonic on Tuesday. Rest. Absolutely right. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Creatures of habit. <laughs> Today's uh, confession comes from Alfie. Alfie, thank you very much, dear Simon and whoever. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks very much. Rude. I seek forgiveness not for me, but for my late father. Allow me to set the scene. Way back in the 1960s, okay. wow. our family lived in a village pub in Suffolk where my dad was the landlord. There was my elder brother, elder sister, mum and dad, and of course me, a mere youth, 13 years old. Now, my big brother, Bob, played in goal for our local football team in a Sunday league. So it's afternoon kickoff, not quite jumpers for goalposts, but not far off. This time, the licensing laws decreed that pubs had to close at 1400 hours, two o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday lunchtime. This meant that mum could have an afternoon nap while the rest of us went to watch the match. <laughs> the crowd was huge. There was dad and his five mates, my sister and me, and about a dozen or so other locals. Half a dozen away team fans, a couple of dog walkers, and a field of cows offering up the occasional moo of encouragement. I think I quite like that. This sounds yeah, yeah. very kind of poetic. Now, on this particular occasion, Dad and a few of our regular customers had been looking forward to this match, a case of local pride or some such, and may have had a glass or two, maybe, of the resident ale. Okay. And to keep out the cold at the match, had filled up the hip flask uh. to take with them. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Drink responsibly, everybody. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Yes. So a PG certificate, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, off we all set to the local playing field to support our village team and my big brother. Our team scored first, and shortly after, the other team equalised, which was greeted by Dad and co, claiming there'd been a foul. It was offside. The ref needed glasses, questioned his parents' marital status, and so okay. on. All the usual good-natured banter you expect at a football match. Half-time, uh, and out came the hip flask. Just to keep away the cold, it was very cold in those days, back in the days, mm -hmm. in the 60s. So a hip flask was legally acceptable. Uh, anyway, then came the moment that I write to you about. 15 minutes to go, is still one all. Suddenly, the opposing team striker beats the offside trap and was one-on-one -on -one with our goalie, my big brother. Now, like all good keepers, he came off his line to cut the angle down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the next bit seems to play out in slow motion. The striker chipped the ball, and as the ball floated over my brother's head and drifted slowly towards the now empty net, uh -huh. there was a low rumbling roar from the crowd. Remember, we're still in slow-mo. Okay. As my dad appeared from behind the goal oh, and God. leaping like a salmon. <laughs> oh, no. no mean feat for a 50-year-old, five-foot-six, yeah. generally returned pub landlord. He punched the ball over the crossbar. Punched? Wow. Wow. There was cheering and booing and mooing from the cow field <laughs> and more than a little hysterical <laughs> laughter. The two teams surrounded the ref, who momentarily seemed a bit nonplussed, but eventually, after a great deal of whistleblowing and threats of booking everyone in a two-yard radius, declared it was to be a drop ball outside uh -huh. the penalty area. Drop balls were contested in those days, remember, and a player from each team stood face-to-face -face, and the ref dropped the ball between them, resulting in each player trying to kick it, each other and the ref at yeah. the same time. <laughs> wow. More booing, mooing and cheering as well. The ref then turned to my dad, took his name and address, and, <laughs> and, address. Yes, and ordered him off the playing field, which he shouldn't have been on anyway because he was just watching. The outcome of which was that he was banned from watching any home games for the rest of his life. Wow! No, sorry, the rest of the season. Okay. There was um, an upside though. The pub was busy for a couple of weeks as people came to congratulate <laughs> the local hero. The game eventually ended up a one-all draw and a lot more protestation towards the ref and more mooing from the field next door. So Simon, can my late father be uh, forgiven for instinctive reaction, albeit one that might be constructed construed as alcohol filled i think mm. it probably was uh, i've decided not to name either of the villages involved to protect the innocent even though it's the 1960s <laughs> and mainly because villagers have long memories and i'd hate for it all to kick off again i just love the fact that it could kick off again even <laughs> after all these after all these years okay so first of all before we go on the forgiveness is that the right referee's decision because clearly with the balls going into the net Dad runs on, yes. saves it. He shouldn't have been on the pitch. Uh -huh. Punches it over. The, that's not a drop ball. That's, well, I think it is. I think that I, th I think that the what? FA laws would say that's a drop ball. Where I think I differ 
is I think you you do it from where the offence takes place. You don't do it outside the area. Oh, right. You do the drop ball where he decides to palm the ball over the crossbar. <laughs> but which... surely they shouldn't have done any of this because he wasn't a member yes, of the team. Clearly. So, Sister Susie, <laughs> anyway, what do you say to Alfie? Well, Alfie, I just... Your dad, you know, he, he, he was... He was trying, and he, I guess it was instinctive reaction, but maybe he shouldn't have taken the hip flask with him if he'd already had a couple of pints yes. at the pub before they closed at two o'clock. And I just don't... I really want to forgive you because you're a pub landlord, and I feel yeah, like I should stick landlords. to you. But uh, do you know what? You shouldn't have got involved in your kid's football game, so no, I'm not going to forgive you. Okay, not harsh forgiven. words, harsh words from Sister Susie. Uh, brother, um, brother Matthew. I mean, mm. taking his name and address seems a little uh, <laughs> extreme, doesn't like it? I don't that. remember them doing that uh, when they when they're given anyone a yellow card. I, I am going to forgive here, because which of us can honestly say that when you've had a little bit to drink and you're watching the footy, and maybe passions get uh, the better of you. So, uh, well, I think we can all say we've all been in that position, and we'd all probably we do the same. So, for that reason, I choose to forgive. <laughs>